we're going to get right to our topic for today. So we've been doing a lot of like last week we talked values. And so that was more of like a thinking topic, you know, like a mindset oriented topic. Today, we're going to get really practical. I want to do a follow on discussion to the metabolism training I did, because I know some of you attended. Um, but those things we can never hear enough because the more we understand how our body works, the more we are empowered to do things based off of that information and we can make good decisions for ourselves based off of that. And so I'm not going to review the entire idea of what I taught on the metabolism class, um, but I do want to hit a couple of key things because in case you missed it, I feel like these are sort of like myths that need to be busted around metabolism and then also around um, changing your quote, body composition. So I wanted to go over a couple of things. We're going to call this like the greatest hits. Metabolism masterclass greatest hits are what's coming to you guys. So first off, in most cases, people's metabolisms are not broken. They have just adapted. Now I say in most cases, because there are anomalies of people who have medical conditions that impact their metabolism, but those are far more rare than we think. Most of the time when we're saying like my metabolism is slow or my metabolism is broken, what we're really saying is that our metabolism has adapted to our choices. And because of that adaptation, it is probably actually smaller. So I don't want you to think about it necessarily being slower. It is smaller. So here's how this works. And again, this is the greatest hits. Your metabolism is actually your body's ability to use energy. That's what it is. You consume food and your body converts it into energy. Well, everybody needs a different amount of energy, right? Like if you are a, like uh, the rock, right? We all know the rock, um, giant, huge man, okay? He needs a lot of energy for that big old muscly body. If we talk about, you know, a petite little tiny person, maybe even like a, you know, a 105 pound, you know, tiny little person, she needs less energy for her body because simply because of size. So like to remove all confusion, her muscle mass, the amount of muscle in her body is way less than the rock, right? And the muscle is what uses the energy. So our bones, I mean, let's, I mean, probably use a little bit, but not really. Like the majority of our energy is used by our muscles. So if you think about it, that, that metabolism process, actually the more muscle we have, the more calories we use or we can use, we need. Now that should tell us first that if we feel like our metabolism is smaller, perhaps one of the things we can do is build muscle. Like, we're just going to keep this super simple. If we build muscle, our bodies will actually use more energy. And that's awesome. We actually want to use more energy. When we say, like, we want that flaming hot, you know, fast metabolism, we got to build muscle to do that, especially as women, because we start losing muscle mass in our 30s and then it increases in our 40s and 50s and 60s. If we are not actively working to build it, we are losing it. And so, your first takeaway from this call is, in order to have a healthy metabolism, we need to be doing strength training and we need to be eating enough protein. That is how you build and maintain muscle. You eat enough protein and you do strength training. And so takeaway number one from today's call is, are you making protein the star of your plates? Like a fit me plate, right? We always start with protein. A portion size is approximately the size of our palm, maybe a little bit bigger, just depends. But Protein being the star of your plate, like the superstar is what I'm saying. Like it's the lead character. You start with protein, then you do half your plate with veggies and then carbs and fat are like the supporting roles. And are you doing some version of strength training? We recommend in Fit Me that you're doing at least three days a week of some kind of strength training. And again, your body counts as a weight. And so you can build and maintain muscle mass from doing body weight strength push-ups on a table, that's building muscle mass, um, squats to a chair, that's building muscle mass, walking up and down stairs, kind of like lunges, that's building muscle. All of those things count. So that's your first takeaway. In order to build a healthy, strong metabolism, we need to be strength training 
and we need to be eating enough protein. Second piece, second piece around metabolism is our energy, like the energy that our body uses, the vast majority of it is called our like BMR. That's our basal metabolic rate. That means like the amount of muscle that you have on your body is going to burn those calories, even if your butt is laying on the couch. So if the rock is laying on the couch and the tiny little dancer, the 105 pound dancer is laying on the couch, their muscle mass is burning those calories, even just laying on the couch. Okay. 60% of the calories that we're using is called, is from our BMR. That's our resting metabolic rate. Okay. Why is that important? Here's why. Because our body uses the rest of our energy to digest food. So we burn calories while we're digesting food. The next portion comes from walking around all day. That's a big chunk, like your walk around energy. And then the last is your exercise. Less than 5% of the calories you quote burn during the day is from exercise. And that is a very important myth because if you are talking about, well, how do, so you're like, Chrissy, what are you talking about? Like you're talking about my body using energy, right? Like how many calories does my body need for energy? And you're telling me that if I'm a bigger person, I'm going to use more energy and that that energy, if even if I lay on the couch, I'm going to use that energy. If I've built that muscle, that's what I'm telling you. So when it comes to losing body fat, okay which if all, if we have a goal of losing body fat, if that is one of your goals, then we actually need to take in a little less calories than our body needs to burn for energy. I'm going to say that one more time because this is true. It's not like the, the calories in calories out. Like that's not helpful. In order to lose body fat, we have to take in a little less than our body is burning a little less. And so here's the part that we have to remember. If we have been dieting for five, 10, 15, 20 years, we may have, and we haven't been doing strength training. We may have shrunk our metabolism. Our metabolism might only function off of 1200 calories. You might only need 1200 calories to stay exactly the same as you are because of chronic diets. And so that means to take in less to like lose fat, you'd have to go down like super low, like 900 calories. That's not sustainable, right? Like who wants to live like that? Meanwhile, if you end up going away on vacay and you're just eating normal, maybe this has happened to you where you're like, you don't eat that much all the time. You're basically like, I don't even eat that much at home. And then you go away on vacay and you eat like a nor- like a normal amount, you don't even feel like you overdo it that bad. You're just like eating, you know, a decent amount of food. And then you're like, how did I gain five pounds from vacation? This is not even fair. Like those five pounds came on and they stayed on. It's because your metabolism had adapted to being like at 1200 and then you ate 2000 for a couple of weeks. So all of a sudden you were eating way more than your body needs. So the, the reason that I'm telling you this is because there's a lot of myths around having a broken metabolism. And so I want to tell you some of the things, again, actionable things that you can do without getting too confused. And like, Christy, the math is confusing me. Don't even worry about it. Here's what you need to do. Strength train, eat enough protein and walk. If you want to have an impact on how your metabolism works, those are your three things. You can be like, Chrissy, everything you said before that is confusing. All I remember is that you said strength train, eat more protein and walk. And you're in the right, you're in the right, like on the right direction. If you want to make it even better, sleep a minimum of eight hours a night. If you can get anywhere close to that, yay you. If you can just move in that direction, you're in the right ballpark. Make alcohol an exception rather than a regular thing because alcohol impacts how our metabolism functions. And keep the processed junk out of the picture because it's essentially not fueling your body with good stuff. 
So all of the, like, again, if you want to rewatch the metabolism masterclass, or maybe, you know, if you want to learn more, maybe you've done a metabolism review and you're like, wow, like I had no idea my body needs more food. This is potentially why. And what we're trying to do for all of us is get to a place where we can eat a good amount of food and feel good in our skin and feel like, man, I'm in a healthy body composition. So your things, strength train, eat enough protein and walk. If that's all you remember, you got your things from this call. If you're not doing those things on the regular, if they are not at the top of your priority list, then this is your week to start to make them a priority and start where you are. If you're like, I'm not eating that much protein. Well, just start with one meal, start with breakfast, add some protein to breakfast or start with dinner. You're like, I'm not really doing much walking. All right, cool. Start with a 10 minute walk. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. You're like, I'm not doing any strength training. I would really want to, but I'm not doing it. Let's start with some small ones. If you don't know what to do, all you need to do is ask your coach. We've got group strength training programs we can give you. And if you're working with a one-on-one -on -one coach for strength training, then you've got help in that category. Those are your things. Walk, strength train, eat protein. Bonus points for how to like make a healthy metabolism. Sleep, minimize alcohol, and remove <coughs> processed junk foods. That's it. Those are your things. So I want to kind of open it up because I know like, again, what I was sharing might make sense or it might be confusing, but what questions do you guys have around metabolism, around what you can do to speed up your metabolism or to have like a strong, healthy, fired up metabolism? And if you're like, why does this matter? You can ask that too. Any, what questions do you guys have? How many days did you say, um, do you recommend to Train start? Checking? Yes. Two to three days a week, but it doesn't have to be super long. So it don't, it, it could only be maybe 20 minutes. It's totally fine. Um, the trick with strength training and all resistance training, you know, if you're doing it right, because everybody's going to be different in terms of weights, right? But you know, you're doing it right. If your last rep is hard. So if you've got weights at home and you're going to be like, okay, Krista said strength train. And this week you're doing shoulder press and you're like six, seven, eight, nine, boom, you did it. That's strength training. That's what it should feel like. If you keep doing those same weights for the next couple of weeks and in oh, two weeks from now, you're like nine, 10, time to go up and wait. That's how you know. Because resistance training should be like creating that stimulus. So three times a week is ideal. And that's what it should feel like or look like. What other questions do we have? Anything regarding metabolism, building muscle, um, how fat loss works, all of this. Ellen, I know you're trying to unmute. <laughs> I'm so bad at this stuff. I can, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so I know I've been under eating for years and years. Just my, um, what I've, my biggest change is I've been eating like a scrambled egg in the morning with spinach in it. Mm -hmm. But I guess my question is like, how long does it take to like reset this? um, to go burn some fat because I want, want that off me. <laughs> it depends on the person and how long you dieted. And so if you are slowly increasing your calories, it could take somewhere between three, six months or a year. It just depends on the person and it depends on where you're starting too. And so, um, I can't give you a, it's a, it depends answer, Ellen. Mm -hmm. But once you are, once you've increased your calories, and again, if you're like, I don't even know if I should increase my calories, I thought I should be eating less. Like, and you're not sure, like, that's what we're here. We're here to help you figure that out. If you're somebody who needs to increase or, you know, decrease to get to your goal. But a lot of people are like you, Ellen, and they've been chronically under eating for a really long time. And they're like, how is it that I can't lose weight? I don't even eat that much. 
And yeah. so if you're that person, it tends to be that you do have to slowly increase your calories over time. And so once they're at a more healthy level, well then, yeah, after that, then, then it, your body will actually respond to letting go of some of that stored body fat. Thank you. Yeah. Cause I, I don't fluctuate with weight, like trying to get like one pound off is crazy. Like anyway, but thank you. <laughs> I yep. don't have a question, but I can attest to this whole metabolism thing. I have a review coming up Tuesday, but, um, you really need to make sure you're eating enough because I am a chronic under eater. And I noticed that when I was not feeling well last week and I have to track my calories because I do under eat and I will continue to under eat <laughs> if I don't. So I was tracking them and I realized I was at 900 calories and had to figure out how to get some more calories in at the end of the day that weren't junk calories to bring my calories up to even like 1500. Mm -hmm. Cause I was chronically under eating for years. And so now I'm eating between 2000 and 2300 calories a day. And the scale hasn't moved since July until yesterday. It was 0. 0.6 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you're eating so much more food way more food sometimes I have a struggle getting it all in but I'm I put I put myself in a range so that I if I get to 2000 and I'm so full I can't eat anymore I don't have to get to 2300 mm -hmm. so one of the ways I like to teach metabolism is to think of it like a fire like an actual fire um, like a backyard fire with logs and wood and all of that. And our fire can shrink. So if we've just been taking away wood for years, we've made our fire like really small. And when your fire's really small and it's not burning hot, what happens if you throw a bunch of wood on? Nothing good, right? Like you can throw a whole crap load of wood on a tiny little fire and the fire is mother. Um, we need the roaring big fire and then you can throw on a bunch of wood. And so the way that we do that is slowly over time. And if you think about like a real fire, you're going to add a little bit of wood and then you're going to blow on it and add some air, you know, and then you're going to let that spark grow and that fire is going to start growing. That's exactly how our metabolism works. And so our bodies are not broken. They've adapted. So Julie, you're like a perfect example. Like if you are somebody who ate low calories for a really long time, your body slowed down to meet that need. You actually, they, they've done studies to show that when we chronically under eat, we actually fidget less. You move less throughout your day. Your body literally slows down to meet that, what you, what you're inputting. And so again, the way to go the other direction is to slowly increase over time and then to stop thinking that we need to eat less to lose weight. There are some people, listen, I'm not going to say everybody. There are plenty of times that where I have met and coached people and we've had fit me people who have just been overdoing it for a while. You know what? That's like, it's okay too. Like there's no judgment. If you've been overdoing it for a long time, great. Well, honestly, that's a little bit easier <laughs> because then we cut out the junk and your body's already at a healthy calorie level and weight loss is pretty fast. Um, but if you've been chronically under eating, then we kind of have to go in two or three steps and that's okay too, because there's no shortcut. There's no way around it. You've got to rebuild that fire and then your body's going to be ready to lose weight. That's true. Cause I've actually been at this this whole year, adding calories slowly to get to the 2,000, 2,300. So it's not something I did overnight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you're, if you're like, I don't know, then this is definitely one of these things where I want you to have the conversation with your coach. Most of you guys are, are having metabolism reviews and you're like map your years. But if you're not, then talk to your coach so that we can like make sure you know what's going on with your body and like the plan for you. I just heard a question, but then I started talking too. That's okay. I, I'm just, I'm just wondering for a woman, how much protein per gram are you supposed to get? If you're looking at an eat, how a person's supposed to eat, I think most women eat 
way less protein than we're supposed to, right? That's, it's, it's not what we naturally do. Do you know in grams per body weight, what we should be having? Yes. It's one gram per pound of lean body mass, all the way up to one gram per pound of actual body mass. And typically what I do, you know, when I was pro with it, if I ever program macros for someone and they're like, they could also set their top of that range at their goal body weight. So for example, if you are, you know, if your goal body weight is 165, you could set that goal. That's your top end protein, 165 grams. So somewhere between typically like 105 to 165 in this example, because your lean body mass is just your muscle mass. And most people don't know exactly what that is, right. um, but that's the answer to that question. Does that, does that give you what you need? I, I, I thought that sounded like what I remember hearing in the past, but it sounds good. A lot of men just go to one to one. They're like, I'm 200 pounds. I'm going to consume 200 grams of protein. Women often, again, we go with that range of like lean body mass all the way up to goal body weight. Right. And that can be a really big jump. Like it tends to be if you under eat protein, you're significantly under eating protein. You might be at 60 grams. You can't just jump to 160. That's not happening. So right. it's okay to like increase slowly. Everything that we do slowly is sustainable. And right. so our bodies ad like to adapt to those kind of things, right? Like if you go out in the sun, maybe this is a bad example because sun's not always good for you, but like, think about it. If you slowly get a tan, your body's adapted, your skin has changed. If you go out there and scorch your skin, like doesn't feel good, your body doesn't like it. And so like when we do things slowly, like increase protein or increase calories, our bodies can adapt to it. What other questions do you guys have? Question for you, Christy. Yes. So if you are newly increasing your protein, like you said, going 60 to 160 is, I mean, you're going to be choking down protein all day. Um, is there supplementation like shakes or things like that, that you would recommend adding in there as an interim step or just having a gradual build? Because sometimes that can be, I mean, it is easier, but it's also a convenience food and not always a thing to rely on. And so what is your recommendation there? I think no more than two protein supplements a day. So in the supplement category, which would be like a protein shake or a protein bar, no more than two a day. The rest of it should come from real food. And if you aren't doing a great job with your real food meals, then I would hesitate to like shortcut with a bar. Here's why. Because if you're eating like really quality fit me plate style meals and you want to supplement with protein, awesome. Like add that protein bar in a snack or add that protein shake in after your workout or on your way out the door, whatever. But if you're skipping, if you're still skipping meals and you think that subbing a protein bar makes sense, you're going to have a hard time with that because you're still going to be struggling with energy levels and cravings. And you're, I mean, again, in a pinch, is that fine? Yes. But like, I wouldn't want you guys to do that on a daily basis. Like it shouldn't be, I'm eating a protein bar instead of lunch every day. Think of it as a supplement. You're eating really quality meals and then you're supplementing to get extra protein. Or if you're in a pinch and you're at the airport and you're like, there's nothing here for me, I'm going to eat a protein bar. Good. By all means, eat a protein bar. But like that, that would be my suggestion. No more than two a day as you're increasing. Thanks. Yeah. And, and if you are new to protein, so if you're like, mm, I'm going from not a lot of protein to eating a lot, sometimes protein can cause gut distress. And what I mean by that is if you eat like if you're not a protein eater and then one day you eat a, you know, 50 grams of protein from a ribeye, your guts might not feel very good because your body has to process that protein and it can't do it fast enough. And so you're going to feel bloated. You might get gas. You might get, I call them bubble guts. And so we don't tend to do that with real food, P.S., because you got to go full send to eat like that much ribeye, right? You got to know what you're doing when you're sitting down. So you might not be surprised when your guts don't feel well, but we do tend to do it with supplements. So you're like, oh, I didn't get enough protein today. Let me like 
eat this chicken and then I'm going to pound this protein shake. Well, you just did the same thing. You just put a, you know, a load of protein into your guts really, really fast. And that liquid protein is even faster. And so then if you're like, why is my stomach upset? I don't tolerate protein. It's not that you don't tolerate protein. It's just too much in one serving. Spreading it out over the day is the best way. I feel like I'm rhyming a lot today. What other questions, guys? I, th I think like these are great questions and I want you to remember the takeaways because that is your action steps for the week. Like incorporating strength training is the big one. Making sure you're intentionally walking and then focusing on protein for your meals. Those are the three things that I want you to do that'll have the biggest impact on your metabolism. And again, if you're not sure, like, am I somebody who needs to eat more or less? Be sure to reach out to your coach and have that conversation just so you know where you're at in relation to your goals. But those three like general guidelines apply to everyone, <laughs> no matter what your goals are. Um, and then again, your bonus points things are to sleep as much as you can. That's amazing for you and your metabolism function to minimize alcohol and minimize processed junk food. Sweet guys, Sarah, do you have a kitten on your chest? I haven't Oops. met your kitten. Yes, this is Binks. He just came home today. I thought I didn't. I was like, did I miss the memo on when the kitten arrived? Yeah, no, like just about a half an hour before our call. Is his so yeah. how do you spell Binks? B I N X, like from Hocus Pocus. Got it. I love it. Yeah, he's a black Maine coon, so he's gonna be a big boy. Oh, wow. those are such yeah. cool. Kids. Cool. Well, yeah. I can't wait to meet him. Well, yeah. guys, it's really sweet. Thanks for plugging into the call. Um, and hopefully you got something that you can use. Do not leave feeling overwhelmed. Just take the thing that sticks out in your brain and do something with it. At the end of the day, you took the time to be here on this call. So take the time to do something with what you learned. Um, turn it into action. Um, and if you need help, that's what your coach is for. That's what your community is for. We are here to support you. And so just let us know what you need in order to implement this in your life. Um, all right, guys, we'll have a fantastic week. If you need anything, just reach out and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, buddy.